Hey there you guys, Sean Allen here. Another day, another vlog. Uh, guess where we are today? We're not at the California Science Center. We are at the Griffith Park Observatory. That's right. And you may have seen the Griffith Park Observatory in many different TV shows and movies, including the Terminator, Transformers, and uh, who else? Uh, what else was this in? Oh yeah, it was in a James Dean movie called Rebel Without a Cause. That's what it was. And if you remember the day when uh, the Endeavor flew over um, the uh, Los, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood, it also flew over here at the Griffith Park Observatory. If you guys want to see my special Universal Studios Hollywood video, link is right there down in the, in the description of this video. Okay, so here we go. Griffith Park Observatory. Whoa. Check this out. It's Colonel Griffith right there. This document is the Los Angeles City Council proclamation accepting the gift of Griffith Park. That is the actual document right there. Check it out, people. It's a Galilean telescope. Okay, folks, let's have some fun. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. All right, folks, let's keep the fun rolling. I'm the Tessa demonstrator this time. My name is Doug, and over the next five minutes or so, I'll be talking to you about this machine, but First, a bit about the man behind the machine. Right. His name is Nikola Tesla, born in the 1800s, died in the 1900s. He led an amazing, amazing life. Imagine living on a farm back in the day. You travel into the city and you see a gentleman not dressed unlike myself. He takes a boat, puts it on water, and makes it move without wires, seemingly with magic. We're talking about remote control technology here in the 1800s. Now that wasn't enough for one man in one life. He went far further. He developed, he pioneered radio broadcasting and receiving. And one night, when everyone at his facility had gone home, he pointed his radio receiver to the night sky, turned it on. Ladies and gentlemen, he knocked on the sky and listened to the sound, and what he heard must have been something akin to the electric thrill of the Tesla coil. Folks, what he heard by angling his receiver to the night sky, what he thought, were radio waves from the intelligent civilization on the planet Venus. Now, we know that the uh, radio waves are a part of the electromagnetic spectrum and are bouncing around outer space all the time. What he heard, we don't know, but it was not an intelligent civilization on the planet Venus. Folks, he worked for Thomas Edison, and he broke from Thomas Edison. We'll leave that story for another day. But he went on to develop the Tesla coil. Now, the next time I fire this device, don't lock your eyes on the top of the tower where the lightning bolts are emanating from. But instead, look at the neon sign. You will see it illuminate even when the lightning bolts are not making contact with it. Folks, the Tesla coil takes in a small amount of electricity and amplifies it. And emanating from it is a giant invisible sphere of electricity. But this copper cage, this Faraday cage, blocks this invisible field from reaching me. Back in the day, I was able to hold a light bulb in my hand and you would see it illuminate. If I would have had a PlayStation, a radio, a television, and pushed the button on, it would have turned on without being plugged into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, this device creates free wireless electricity, but here's the deal. 
The more electricity that it makes, the smaller that sphere becomes. So you would need one of these Tesla coils, 10, 20, 30 times the size on every street corner on all the time to supply us with the electricity that we require. But it would also require us walking through this invisible field of electricity. And if we, if technology continues and we have computer chips implanted in our brain and fancy pacemakers installed in our heart, maybe it would affect these. Maybe not, I don't know. But this device persists here in the Griffith Observatory. Why? What does it have to do with the stars and the galaxy and the cosmos? The answer is absolutely nothing, but it is amazing. And we will not take it out. But to be real, this area of the, muse of the, of the observatory dealt with the new scientific gadgetry since we opened it in 1935, and we still do on this side. So, as grand and noble of an idea as this is, and ladies and gentlemen, again, this is free wireless electricity, it is ultimately too grand and too noble. But it does continue to persist here in the Griffith Observatory. And we will fire it one more time this hour. So, we'll count down from five. If you want a picture, pull out your phone or your camera, whatever. Four, if you want a good picture, you might want to turn your flash off. Three, you want to make sure that the image is focused quite well. Two, make sure your finger is on the button or the trigger. And one, hold your breath. For here we go, one more time. This is the Tesla coil. And that, folks, is the Tesla coil. Have a good night. Thank you. Turn off the light so easily with that Tesla coil. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Sucking all the energy. Yeah, that's right. Actually, that copper cage is there now because we have, uh, you know, the planetarium show. We have a computer coming behind this wall. Okay, so we're now in moon phases. So now let's pretend that we're at the Earth. It's now a new moon. Please make the 845 excuse the Santa Lucia planetarium show. Please make your way towards the south gallery. Now we're going to get ready to go into the first quarter. See it? Please remember that we only see or refunds for Miss Shells. Thank you. It's going to be a full moon here any second. There it is. There's your full moon. Okay. Going into the last quarter. So pretty soon it's going to be a new moon once again. Look at this. Got the planets right there. Look at this. Even though it's no longer a planet, it's actually a dwarf planet. Look at that. That's Pluto right there. Look at that. Eight, 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I definitely don't want to live there. There it is, way up there. You see it? All right, so the next one we have up here, over here is Venus. This is, of course, has a device that they sent to Venus. I think it landed, yeah. They landed this thing on Venus, but it melted with, within an hour. Venus is right there. Again, another dangerous planet you don't want to live on. And of course it's Earth, and well, we probably know about that already. Here is Mars. Of course, you guys may remember the Curiosity rover landed there back in August. Next we have Jupiter. Oh my gosh, that is huge. There's the red spot right there. That's Jupiter. Next we have Saturn. Woo! Look at those rings. <laughs> Uranus. There it is, right there. <laughs> Look at that, it's actually rotating on its side. Can you believe that? Here comes Neptune. Neptune <laughs> is right there. And last but not least, we have Pluto. I already showed you that a few minutes ago. Alright, so we actually found out that they have some rocks from Mars and, and the moon that we can touch here at the observatory. So we're going to check those out in a second. Look at this. This is the original planetarium projector. Look 
at this monstrosity. That is ginormous. They used this thing up to 2002. That's crazy. Oh, this is cool. Three dimensional Earth. Jeez. That is incredible. Look. It's Jupiter. We're gonna spin it around. Oh, look at that, that's cool. It's filled with like a, a, a like a, a juice or something. Yeah, look, it's like filled with a liquid. Oh gosh. We're gonna spin this thing so fast. Look at that. Slow it down. See that? Can you see it spinning around? There it goes. Those are supposed to be the gases going around uh, Jupiter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's going out of control. <laughs> Check it out, folks. It's the moon. It's the moon. And what's this box? That is an actual moon rock. Look at that. It's under lock and key, basically. That's an actual piece of moon right there. I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, we went to the California Science Center. I didn't put it on one of my vlogs, but I have it on my Facebook page. But in one of my vlogs, we saw a little fragment of moon dust that was brought back from the Apollo 11 mission. Okay, so this is a uh, meteorite from Mars. There it is. I'm touching Mars right there. No, it's a piece of Mars. It's a piece of Mars, but it's a meteorite. It says meteorite from Mars. This one here is a meteorite from the moon. There it is. Hey, it's a lot smoother. This is smoother. Oh my gosh. That is a humongous meteorite. Look at that. 395 pounds. Jeez. Fatso. <laughs> Iron meteorite. Jeez. Check this out, you guys. I got myself a miniature meteorite. Um, this is an actual meteorite. Yeah, look at that. That looks... Looks kind of similar, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, look at that. Yeah, I purchased this from the uh, um, the observatory store. You can get these right now. Um, but yeah, that is cool. This is a stony meteorite. It's pretty smooth. Here's a stony iron meteorite right there. And last but not least, we have the iron meteorite. Oh, that's cold. Sheesh. And this one is a 269-pound iron meteorite. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty rough. All right, you guys, this is the Griffith Park Observatory up here in Griffith Park, California. Be sure to check it out at some point, very soon. And we have our famous astronomers up here. It's pretty cool. Look at that, folks. You're looking at Hollywood. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but way over there on the hill over there, that's where the Hollywood sign is. Right there. You can barely make it out. It's right there. Just below those lights. That's the Hollywood sign. Right there. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Whoa, did you hear that? Got some coyotes. Hear them? Well, everybody, that's it for today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time here on Sean Elm Films, the vlog series. Bye!